Hi lovely viewers, it's me again your one and only Mtati Mpundu. Welcome to my YouTube channel. If this is your first time on my channel, kindly subscribe to my YouTube channel by hitting the red subscribe button down below and turn the bell icon to join the notification squad. Don't forget to like, share and leave a comment. Tell me what you think about this video in the comment section below. I'll be super glad to hear from you lovely viewers. Or indeed deserves their respect. Such a leader must begin packing and it is time to get rid of him. <laughs> Fellow Zambians, a name must always say something about you. A name must introduce you to the people before they can even see you. This also goes for some slogans and party symbols. Our political name as Zambia must prosper is not different. A political symbol is not different. Before launching our manifesto, let us understand a few facts about our party's name. Zambia must prosper. Zambia must prosper is an ideology. Zambia must prosper is a political name. Zambia must prosper is an economic ideology. Zambia must prosper is also a spiritual ideology. Yes. Our party symbol, Kayanda. Munganda emutampile fin to fiance. So fellow Zambians, when you hear the name of a political party, when you see the symbol of a political party, look at those symbols and look at the name very carefully and understand that it could carry connotations that may not want the country to go into. As we begin to head to 2026 general elections, we must ask ourselves very deep fundamental questions about where we want to take our nation. The first question is, who are we? Who are we as a people? In Zambia must prosper, we believe that we are one people. We believe that we are one tribe. We believe that we are one nation. We also believe that we are one country. It is for this reason in this process that in the family is not sufficient such a family in the road to prosperity. In order for this to happen, we want every Zambian family to at least afford three decent meals every day. We want every Zambian family to have a decent home. We want every Zambian family to have access to quality, affordable health care. We want every Zambian family to be able to educate its children. And we want every Zambian family to be able to save or at least invest some of its income. Only then can we speak and declare with confidence that such a country is on the road to prosperity. We believe in Zambia must prosper that when this happens, that is when we can declare that when Zambians prosper, Zambia prospers. Allow me a moment to talk about the family generally. 
In Zambia must prosper. We believe that every season has its moment. But this is true. In every season, family does matter. We believe that when we have praying families, you are going to have a praying nation. That when you have educated families, you're going to have an educated nation. Similarly, when you have families that uphold strong moral values and ethics, you're going to have a nation that is morally upright. It goes without saying that when you have families that are disciplined and hardworking, you will end up with highly productive nations, and Zambia is no exception. Spiritually, the family is the DNA and integral foundation upon which a successful nation's character is built. Many leadership, professional, business, and moral failures that our nation is suffering from today can easily be traced from broken families. Those families have been neglecting their role of inculcating the right moral values in our children. As Zambia must prosper, we believe that in order to transform and sustain peak performance in all areas of our nation's productivity, we need to deliberately and systematically re-engineer our efforts in strengthening the foundational unit of the family. As a nation, we need to seriously reinvest our efforts in making the family unit the most important building block for our nation. For this reason, Zambia must prosper will marshal up adequate political will to ensure we invest into the rebuilding and repositioning of our families. We as politicians in conjunction with the church, in conjunction with the church at large, have a duty to formulate and implement policies that support families to produce the kind of citizens that Zambia needs for productivity and prosperity. With strong, hard-working families, we will cultivate and maintain a strong, hard-working nation. We promise, we promise to build our Zambian families on Christian values as a political party. As ZMP, we understand and accept that in Zambia, outside the family and the school systems, there is no other entity as powerful and influential as the church. In fact, the church is far more influential than any other political party in this country. We are aware that the church has regular access to our citizens every week, every month, throughout the year. The church is spread throughout this country. And therefore, we must respect the church. Remember, fellow Zambians, that church membership is composed of people of all ages, different backgrounds, different professions, and different political affiliations. But the church never segregates. The church never discriminates. The church embraces us, all of us, as citizens. The church as a constituency in Zambia is bigger than all of us put together. This is why, for Zambia must prosper, we shall always, always 
run to the church for solace, spiritual guidance, and moral guidance. We in Zambia must prosper, understand the history of this country. And we also know that the church is there to protect us, guide us, and ensure that there's unity in this country. We will also respect and work with other religious faiths obtaining in Zambia because the problems we are faced with affect all of us regardless. Above all these considerations, Zambia must prosper will always, always put our women first. <laughs> that when we put our women first, they shall look after the families, they shall look after the youths, and they shall indeed look after our communities. Fellow Zambians, having laid the foundation of our party's philosophy, allow me to address some of the biggest problems we are faced with as a nation today. Let us all agree and accept that we have a lot of problems that need for the purpose of this discussion here today. We will only highlight some fundamentals that are going to go to make us understand how we are going to be creating jobs when we get to government as Zambia must prosper. Fellow Zambians, our biggest problem in Zambia today is leadership failure, which has made the economy, our politics, and the governance of this country to fail. Let us begin with the economy. I want to say this without any sense of shame. As a nation today, Zambia is in a state of operation. We are in the theater. Our nation is failing to get out of the theater because it is sick. Our productivity as a nation has slowed down and there is nothing working. Our first topic for discussion today is our infrastructure. Please allow me some time here because I want to take an opportunity such as this to make our nation understand that we shouldn't be in this position we are in today. Infrastructure. No country in the world can ever claim to be developed without the necessary infrastructure to be able to deliver goods and services to its people. Adequate infrastructure is vital for the social and economic development of our country. It is a fact that the quality of our nation's infrastructure has a direct bearing on the quality of services and goods our nation is able to provide to our people. Essential services such as health, education, electricity, sanitation, the provision of clean drinking water, transportation of our agricultural produce to markets, communication, and road networks are but a few of the areas that affect our nation's GDP. The reason for this is that adequate quality infrastructure ultimately affects our nation's commerce and trade internally and externally. The long-term effect is that the level of our nation's infrastructure has a direct bearing 
on how much investment we as a nation attract. As Zambia must prosper, we have taken time to study the baseline report card for Zambia's infrastructure done in 2014. On the roads, bridges, water supply, sanitation, solid waste management, electricity, information and communication technology, rail infrastructure and concrete rivers, or what we are going to term as water canal connectivity. Going forward, and because we want to create millions of jobs, because our youths are suffering, Zambia must prosper. We'll prioritize infrastructure development from day one in government. We will intend to open our country up by embarking on the following massive projects. Please listen and listen good. By policy, under what we are terming as the Connect Zambia 20,000 kilometers road project, all roads in Zambia that interconnect between provinces will be dual carriage. This country is 60 years old. We cannot be waiting for Wamuisa to come and give us new roads. We should do it ourselves. Let me explain so that some of you may understand what this means for jobs. This means the following. I'll start from where I was born, on the Kopala. Pariapa Alwera Chingola Tanov going to Solwezi in northwestern province. There will be a dual carriage road between the Copper Belt province and northwestern province. Let us move from the Copper Belt to Ingilipa Central province. When we turn Pakapirin Poshi, Kapirin Poshi heading through Mukushi, Serenje, Lavushimanda, Mpika, Chinsari, Isoka up to Nakonde, what our forefathers called the Hell Run, that will be a dual carriage road. We move to Lusaka. Lusaka connectivity going to Mayimbuyas in the eastern province. We shall have a dual carriage road leading to Lusaka, from Lusaka to the eastern province. I'll take a step back so that you understand. This means that from the Mpika Junction leading to Kasama, that 210 kilometers there will be a dual carriage because Muchinga will be connecting to the northern province. When we come down from the Tuta Bridge connection, that's Serenje side by here. From Serenje Tanov going into Mansa, that 312 kilometers will also be a dual carriage because that will connect Central Province to Luapua Province. And from Luapula, we are going to move from Mansa, passing Muchipiri, to Apita Kuluingu, Ukuingira Mukasama, that 300 kilometer stretch, that will be a dual carriage road. When we come to Lusaka, from Lusaka, going to Southern Province, passing through Chilanga, Kafiwe, and all the way to the junction Kumana Maindauko, right through to Livingstone, this will be a dual carriage road as well. <laughs> Lusaka again, leading into Kwahae, passing through Mumbwa, passing through the game park, passing through Nkeema, Kaoma, right through to Mongo, that will also be a dual carriage road. <laughs> Every province connecting to another province must be a dual carriage road. Yeah. Now, for those of you who are lost in translation, allow me this. 
To build these roads, that means you're opening up the country. These are jobs for our youths. These are jobs for the contractors. I want to throw a challenge to our university engineers and those in practice as engineers. We want these roads to be built, but the people to lead the charge must be Zambian engineers. We are going to allow people to come in to help us, but the Zambians must lead the charge. That is how you create employment. You open up the infrastructure, that connectivity. If you see the distances, some of these roads will take months, others will take years. Youths will be employed. Look at how much stone will be required. Look at how much cement will be required. How much bituminous will be required. How many workers will be required to open up our road network in the manner that I've explained. Those are jobs. This is what the other political parties don't want to think about. This is what the other political parties don't want to tell you. Indalama Shara in Muzambia. Specifically, because of its importance, the Lusakan dollar dual carriage road will not be in the manner you're seeing it today. Please understand. Every truck, every bus coming from southern side of Zambia, coming from Namibia, Botswana, Zimbabwe, South Africa, gets to pass through the Ndola Lusaka Road. Every truck coming from DRC, from TZ, and from the Copper Belt to Lusaka passes through that stretch. As Zambia must prosper, we have decided by policy that that road will not just have two roads you're calling it dual carriage that stretch of the road we intend to put up in phases four lanes leading into Lusaka and four lanes leading into the Copper Belt that will speed up the delivery of goods and services in order to open up commerce and trade countrywide and improve service and food delivery. The following provincial and town roads will also be earmarked for construction and upgrading. This will be done again in phases. Let's talk about Lusaka. There is too much congestion in Lusaka. You cannot even say, now lie somebody 15 minutes, because that means you're going to get there in an hour. Lusaka has enough roads, but what it needs is to decongest the city. Zambia must prosper looking forward has decided that we are going to plan for major ring roads to decongest the CD, CBD of Lusaka. This also means that we're going to create concrete connectivity roads. So that this can be done and this plans were done but they were shelved we intend to bring up these plans and execute them Luapula. from bahati Mwense, Nchelenge, Mununga, right through to Chienge Road. That road has to be done. 60 years after independence, we chief Utawenda Mulukungu. Mwachuluka Kalungu ishi, Parua Mununga, Mulea Kuchienge Lukungu throughout. Mulea Kubuile, traditional ceremony, Mulea Mulukungu. That must stop. This road must be built. The Kaputa Chiengi Road will also have to be built. Now, for those of you who don't know geography, let me educate you a bit. Kaputa is the last town in Wapula before you go into the DRC. Chiengi, no, Kaputa is in northern province. Chiengi is the last town in Wapula 
before you go to the DRC. But you can connect those two towns so that people can move from Kaputa to Chiengi. That road will have to be done as well. The Kaputa Msumbu Road has to be done. This is a very nice road. Some of you have followed. Accidents are abound. People have died on these roads. We can't continue at this rate. The Kawambwa Mushota Luingu Road has to be done. All these roads indicate to you who are sitting here, my brothers and sisters, that jobs are going to be created. In Eastern Province, Chama Matumbo Road has to be completed, including the bridge. Mpika Nagwalian Fue Road has to be constructed. We cannot have people traveling for two days between one town to the next town, 60 years after independence. The Chadiza Katete Musoro Chipata Road has to be done. These towns connect each other, and they are quite close to each other. This will create jobs for the youths in Eastern Province, those who are going to be working on the roads. The Chipata Lundazi Road, I know government announced recently that the Chipata Lundazi Road is going to be constructed, but I want to assure my cousins in Eastern Province that this government will not finish that road. Zambia must prosper is coming to finish that road. <laughs> Southern Province. We are going to make and construct a road between Choma and Namwala. This road needs resurfacing. And this road needs widening. But what is insulting about this road? And the president comes from there. He passes through this road. Some of the bridges, when you're going from Choma to Namwala, are still the same steel bridges that the colonial commission has traveled on. Why can't we make proper bridges so that we can move faster and deliver our goods and sell our goods at a faster pace? Deliver our medicines at a faster pace. Lusitu, Gwembe Road, this has to be completed. This you may call it the bottom road. All these roads, I keep re-emphasizing, are going to be creating employment. The Siamwinga via Chikankata Road has to be constructed. This road will go and connect into a dual carriage leading from Lusaka to Livingstone. There's a very important special road that I want to talk about in Southern Province. We are going to construct a road from Kalomo. Please listen and listen good. From Kalomo, passing through Dundumwezi, Itejiteji, into Mumbwa. This connectivity, as you will understand when I discuss Northwestern Province, is going to make traveling from southern province into northwestern province a shortcut. People don't need to come via Lusaka to get into northwestern province. You can cut through this road, get to Mumbwa, and from Mumbwa, get into Kasempa. You are already in northwestern province. You would have cut distance. But more importantly, we are going to do this so that we create jobs right there in southern province. The Chiawa Feira Road, Chiawa Feira Road has to be completed. I know this was started, but it hasn't been finished. Northwestern Province, the Soloizi Munilunga Road, there is no road to, to talk about. This road is finished, but it's an economic road. We are going to construct this road and extend it. The Kabompo Munilunga Ikelenge Jimbe Road has to be constructed. Then we have to construct from Western Province, between Kasempa and Kaoma, a road 
that will connect Western Province and Northwestern Province. Again, this is going to cut distances. People moving from Western Province don't need to pass through Lusaka to go to Northwestern Province. They can cut from Kaoma and get into Northwestern Province. This will be a shortcut. <laughs> The Kasempa, Lufanyama, Karulushi Road has to be done because this is also a shortcut which will ensure people from the Copper Belt, Northwestern Province can connect to each other through Lufanyama without having to swing through Solwezi and then coming round back. The Solwezi Kasempa Road needs resurfacing and extensions. We will also cut, like I said, from Mumbwa to Kasempa, a road. For those of you that have not traveled as much as I have, and the roads I'm talking about, by the way, I've traveled on these roads. I know these roads by heart. Sioma to Shangombo is about 170, 179 kilometers. But it takes people seven hours to move from Sioma to Shangombo and vice versa. You can picture this. A jet can pick up from Kenneth Kaunda International Airport and get into Dubai by the amount you're moving between Sioma and Shangombo. Are we not ashamed as a nation that we can't construct roads for our people? I know the Minister of Infrastructure has been singing about roads, but so far I've only seen him talk about two roads. The others, he says, they're not economic roads. Let me educate Honorable Milupe. When you open up the country and do infrastructure in the manner Zambia must prosper, is proposing, you are opening up the economy. <laughs> The Kaoma Lukulu road right through to Zambezi in northwestern province has to be done. There are people living in this road, along this road. But we are also going to get rid of the pontoon at the Zambezi River crossing. We need a proper bridge leading us into Zambezi so that transportation can be faster. In this day and age, we're still using the pontoons left by our con colonial masters. We must be ashamed. Let me say this. No country develops without imagination. And some of you sitting here are saying these are bold statements, but how are you going to do it? How did the Europeans do it? How did the Japanese do it? How did the Chinese do it? How did the Russians do it? How did the Americans do it? You begin, first of all, with an idea. A bold idea. And you must be courageous enough to have the political will to drive that agenda. In Muchinga province, we are only going to do one road, unfortunately, for my people in Chinsari. And this road is the Chinsari Mbesuma Road. It is a back road leading us to Kasama. I am very happy that during the, the days of Asata, a bridge was commenced, but it has not been completed. That bridge has to be completed, and we can get through Kasama, through Mbesuma, to Chinsari without coming through Mpika. It's like a shortcut. Let's talk about Northern Province. Northern province, we have the Nseluka, Makasa, Kayambi, Chozi, Nakonde Road. This road will run parallel to the rail line. Now those of you that understand Northern province, you know that this is where the beans comes from. This is where my mother's village is allegedly supposed to be. May her soul rest in peace. Kuria Kubama Mbwe, Avalungu, these beans and the rice in that area needs to get to the market quickly. The road has to be done. Isoka Mbesuma Kasama Road, another road from Isoka, 
joining the Chinsari Mbesuma Road to Kasama. Again, those two towns, you can get from Isoka to Kasama without getting into the Great North Road. Luingu, Chiluvi, Vayan, Sombo, Chala Road. This is a very important road. To Afrika Pamench number. Luingu is in northern province, but it swings round. And if you get through Nsombo and Chava, you get to Chiruvi, the island. Please help me. There's a lot of fishing going on there. A lot of rice grows around that area. And indeed, a lot of beans and other produce grows. But it goes to waste because there are no roads. We should give our people these roads which they require. For those of you who follow me, again, we are going to construct from Nkosha right through to Kaputa a road before we get to Nsumbu. Padi wa Tanof, Padi Anga Machuka, Vipa Mununga, Mulea Kwat Mulea Kumsama, you stop and turn left. Kwambo Kuninika, Mwapita Mu, Omeveriati. Going to Kaputa. This road is important because our people cannot get to towns to buy food and medicines and the delivery of goods. So this road has to be done as well. But let me say this. We have a vice president in the current government who comes from Kaputa. And this road leads to her village. And this road is not being done. Not even anyone is talking about it. Most roads were done, but there's a particular road which sits at my heart. Malangele Lako, here I'll be a bit selfish. We need to do the Ndola Mufurila Mukambo Road. This is an economic road. Somewhere in previous governments, ribbons were cut, but the road was never done. We shall do this road. This will help connect Ndola and Muflira right through to Mukambo and the DRC Pedico to Chembe into Mansa. It will also reduce the distance of people traveling via Kitwe all the time onto the dual carriage, Ndola dual carriage. They can cut from Ndola to Muflira and head to do business without wasting time. After all, now we shall have petrol and gas pumping. Eh, can you and pass the three and pass it now? On the Copper Belt, the last road we shall do is the turn off at Kaflafuta leading to Luansha. That is a very important road because it also reduces traffic going into Ndola. It also reduces the speed and distance of the trucks. But with that turn off, a lot of work can be done. And the people of Luansha don't need to go through Ndola to get to Lusaka. Under Zambia must prosper in government, we will get into long-term partnerships with goodwill strategic investors, not only to revamp our very poor rail infrastructure, but to reinvest and modernize and take advantage of our geopolitical comparative advantage. We need rail lines in this country. Some goods do not need to be transported on the roads. That's what destroys our roads. Yeah. We can't keep repairing these roads. We need rail lines. Yeah. The responsibility to look into the future and commit to making the rail transport for our goods and services and our people in the region cannot be overemphasized. We are aware that the road and rail infrastructure are a bedrock of our country's economic and social well-being. This 
is the more reason why Zambia must prosper is willing to take bold steps to open up our country so that we ensure that our country's infrastructure can meet the present and future needs of this country. For the Zambian economy to be competitive in the sub-region and attract investment globally, we will need an infrastructure system that is world-class, trustworthy, and which performs efficiently at all times. In government, Zambia must prosper will invest constantly in transport systems that are reliable, that will move our people and goods efficiently. As government in waiting, Zambia must prosper knows that our infrastructure system is on the whole failing to keep up with the current future expanding needs that are required to move our goods and people. Our population is growing, this is a fact. Feeding our people is becoming a very serious challenge, this is a fact. Our hospitals and schools are flooded. No new housing units are being built by this government. Government after government, no proper infrastructure. Policy seems to be helping, and the situation seems to be helpless. But I am here to tell you that although nobody seems to care, Zambia must prosper understands that we need infrastructure for us to grow this economy. Another area of infrastructure that we are going to engage in is that Zambia must prosper is going to go and create and construct what we are terming as concrete rivers. Please follow me. These will be water canals. We will need to connect some of our roads, sorry, some of our rivers to other rivers so that those rivers don't run dry. We will need to ensure that the impact of the recent drought and adverse weather patterns in our country are controlled by ourselves. ZMP in government will not treat this situation as business as usual. Zambia must prosper will plan against floods, water wastage and droughts by building water canals or concrete rivers so that we divert and collect and control our water when it rains and ensure that we can use this water when we want it. This water will be used also for transportation. This is not a pipe dream. Some of us who have traveled, you will agree with me. Some towns have rivers, concrete rivers passing through them, and they use barges to transport the goods. That will also reduce pressure on our roads. Importantly, this water, when collected and controlled, will also help, will also help and ensure that we have water transport, we have irrigation throughout the year when we need the water, and we have to generate electricity from some of this water, which we shall control and connect and divert. <laughs> Zambia and Sports Park shall deliberately have these concrete rivers to ensure that our major rivers are connected to each other, and all this water that we have, which is about 40% of our fresh water in the sub-region, we get to use it first before it runs off into the seas. Let me explain so that by Lusaka maybe you can understand. In Lusaka, we only have about two pipes leading from the Kafue River to Lusaka. These pipes run along the road, the Kafue Road. Zambia Must Prosper has taken a study. We are going to ensure that at the confluence, for example, of Kafue and Zambezi River, we start pumping some of that water before it goes to Mozambique. We pump it back into Chongwe and pump it back into Lusaka and set up water cleaning plants so that there is enough water for Lusaka. 
Zambia must prosper, we will prioritize sanitation as well and ensure that we are going to have clean drinking water and water for irrigation. But in all this, fellow Zambians, what I want you to see is the number of jobs that you're going to create, number of jobs that we are seeing that you may not see today. These concrete rivers we're going to create will mean that we'll need to deepen some of our rivers. There will be dredging, there will be movement of silt, sand from these rivers so that we deepen the rivers. All this means construction. The engineers are still being challenged on this point. Next point, agriculture. As Zambia must prosper, we recognize that agriculture is the single most important economic sector in our country in terms of actual impact on our citizens' livelihood. We also know that over 10 million Zambians directly or indirectly depend on agriculture for their livelihoods, be it in crop farming, animal rearing, fish farming, or marketing of goods, crops, and fish or meat. Because of this, Zambia must prosper will not leave this sector to chance. Because we need food security to be a priority. Zambia must prosper in government will actively finance and subsidize, please understand that term, will subsidize the establishment of fully fledged agricultural production cities and manufacturing settlements. Agricultural production cities will carry a commercial component so that value addition of every crop that will grow is also enhanced. Also, these agricultural cities will come with a critical component. They are going to have amenities such as housing, schools, hospitals, shops, banks, sports facilities, and arts facilities. Basically, we will be creating new cities, but based on agriculture. More or less on the model of what you see at Nakambala Sugar Estate. The sugar plantation is the core industry. Around it, you have housing, you have hospitals, you have clinics, you have schools within that town. Try and imagine, fellow Zambians, that Nakambala Sugar Estate is not there. Where is Mazapuka? Now, in Zambia Must Prosper, we are saying we want to see at least three agricultural cities in every province of this country. We have identified the crops that we are going to be working with. The target is to have at least three major agricultural cities in every province once the program is running at peak. Our agricultural policies will be centered on increasing food production and domestic use and national security first, and this will be followed by value addition and export second. We shall ensure that our agriculture is well organized, managed, and supported. Zambians taking up farming as a career will be encouraged and trained under the agricultural production cities by the provision by the provision of equipment, seeds, livestock, and farmland for our grower scheme production. This system will ensure that the small-scale farmers will have a ready market with a fair competitive price already waiting for them. Well managed, well managed. Within the first five years, our agriculture sector may post close to 25 to 30 billion in dollars, substantially contributing to our GDP as a nation. Remember, fellow citizens, everyone needs food. Our traditional leaders in our 288 chiefdoms will be brought on board and on speed with regard to these production cities. Zambia must prosper. We will also promote forest farming and ensure that we begin to take advantage of our fruits in Zambia. We shall be planting fruits, fruit trees, and timber trees. This will boost our forests and also fight against the devastating climate change which we are faced up with. Yeah. 
with regards to fishing fishing mwewena luapula mwewena northern province mwewena mchingo kwa lame nshuko mungu mfikishe with regards to fishing Zambia is reported to have an estimated deficit of between 87,000 to 100,000 tons of fish. How can we have a deficit of fish production with the amount of rivers, lakes, and water bodies that we have in this country? We are currently importing fish of between 40,000 to 60,000 tons annually from China and Namibia. That far. We are losing in business close to between $100 million to $150 million annually, depending on the season and the price of fish. With our abundant natural water bodies and fresh water in Zambia, under Zambia must prosper, we will not allow this to continue. This is unacceptable. We are going to set up production cities. We are going to set up production cities. Some will be centered on fish production. Fish production with an inbuilt capacity to ensure that we produce millions of tons of fish per annum in our farms, on our lakes, in our rivers. And that is employment, Mwewantu. We want to be creating employment at all times. With our concrete rivers alluded to, the reservoirs to be built, the dams and natural rivers, lakes, employing modern technologies in fish farming, we will be able to have a surplus within a minimum of one to two years. Let's talk about livestock. Livestock in Zambia is only known to be in southern province. This is not true. Livestock is in every province of this country. Zambia must prosper will encourage livestock production in all our 10 provinces. We will encourage smart, modern livestock production of goats, pigs, cows, chickens, ducks, name it. What this means, Banamayo, Mukalate Kenkoko. Banamayo, Mukalate Kenkumba. Mukalate Kotubushi. You don't need much. Zambia must prosper in government will not tolerate any agricultural business cartels and monopolies. That will endanger food security and the growth of our GDP. We have watched, we have read, and we know, and we are keenly following, that we know that in such areas as cotton, tobacco, dairy produce, day old chip production, and the supply of seeds. There is an emerging cartel arrangement and monopolies. Zambia must prosper will come and get rid of this. Yes. Let me talk about our education. Education, youths, the informal sector, and the small-scale businesses. In Zambia Must Prosper, we believe that it is the duty of every parent to instill a sense of purpose in our children before releasing our children into the world to get an education. If this human capital, i.e. our children, is damaged or misguided at family level, most likely the end product will be untrainable or will be damaged or useless. By policy, we will direct and coordinate strategic plans for the education of our children from birth, academic learning skills, training up to employment level. 
Zambia must prosper in government. We will respect and insulate the teaching profession. We are teacher Mungu Mfuikshe, please. We shall insulate and protect the teaching profession so as to ensure that our best students at universities and colleges can get into the teaching profession. Our teachers will be highly remunerated so as to ensure that we have retention power of the best brains. Without good teachers, there will be no engineers. Without good teachers, there will be no doctors. Without good teachers, there will be no nurses. There will be no lawyers, no bankers, no economists, no policemen, no pilots. Every profession will be dead. As youths, we need an education, but we need good teachers. Fellow Zambians, in Zambia must prosper, we recognize that the millions of our unemployed youths and uneducated youths are not a burden, but an asset to our nation. They just need to be redirected and given jobs. We also know that our youths need this education because that makes them better people. Educating our children is not a cost, but it is an investment into our human capital for the future. For this reason, our duty of care as a government will be founded on the pillar policy, as you can see, posted around here. Every youth at school or at work. We shall ensure that the ratio of secondary schools in each district and province is improved to at least 10 to 4. This will mean where there are 10 primary schools, we will need at least 10 secondary schools, 4 secondary schools rather, depending on the size of the population or the geographical area. As alluded to earlier, Zambia must prosper will put in place a deliberate policy to build adequate modern school facilities with accompanying teacher accommodation. Zambia must prosper will endeavor to build a university in each of our provincial capitals so that our children don't just need to come to Lusaka to get into university. They can learn from Luapula, they can learn from Western Province, from Northern Province, from Northwestern Province, anywhere there will be a university. In addition, Zambia must prosper who will ensure that we strengthen our research in our industries and the development of all medicines, agricultural produce, computer technology, manufacturing, livestock and fisheries. The universities will work hand in hand with our agricultural production cities and our mining production cities which will be set up. This will ensure and maintain high levels of productivity. Under Zambia must prosper. Our primary to university education curriculum will be modified and realigned so as to prepare our youths for the real workplace adequately. Zambia must prosper understands that we need to increase sports facilities, arts facilities, recreational infrastructure, so as to tap into the various talents that our children possess. We shall also ensure that we control the mushrooming of schools that do not even have a playground for our children. When we do this, when we do this, we shall see that our children are going to excel in the various sporting fields, musical talents, arts, singing, and other talents that they may possess. This will be with a business approach. It will not be a social factor. 
Zambia must prosper, we will realign and ensure that the teacher training is improved and specialization is emphasized in areas of sports, drama, music, arts, coloring arts, fashion design, carpentry, metal fabrication, debates, etc. With this development and corresponding necessary infrastructure, our youths will early in life know and begin to concentrate on developing their talents, their gifts and ideas and skills for practical future employment. Let me give examples here so that some of you who may be lost with what I'm saying may understand. La youth, this is for you. Let us look at the many youths globally and internally in our country who have made a living out of their talents. They are too numerous to mention, but I'll just name a few. In the football field, we know of names such as Pele, the late legendary Brazilian Pele, who won the World Cup three times. We know of players such as Ronaldo. We know of players such as Lionel Messi. We know of players such as Ronaldinho, who won the Ballon d'Or so many times. We know of players such as Wayne Rooney. We know of African players like Samuel Eto, DJ Drogba, Yaya Toure, Mo Salah. And in Zambia, to bring it home, we know of players such as Patson Daka, Fashion Sakala, Barbara Banda, and Kundananji. These began playing football, and some of them are still playing, some of them are late, when they were youths. But what they played football for was not for social entertainment, it was for business. Because they realized this is their talent. Yes. And some of them made a livelihood yes. out of this. This is serious business, people. Yes. Now let me ask the youths out there, and the Zambians generally, how many of the names that I've mentioned here went to university? How many of them entered college? Because I can tell you with my, my team, which is my favorite team, I know people may say, no, we're not doing too well. But at Manchester United, academies are open. <laughs> academies are open for boys as early as 11 years old, Buana. And they grow in that system and then get into the big league. Let's talk about music. Let us talk about music so that you understand that this is a business. We have got names such as the late Elvis Presley, the late Michael Jackson, the Jackson Fives, Madonna, Whitney Houston, the late Tupac Shakur, the late Biggie, P. Diddy, Jay-Z, Beyonce, Taylor Smith, name them. I can bring it home. I can bring it home. When JK started his music, I fell in love with JK. One of my favorite songs when JK was singing was But we also have youths, Zambian youth singing abroad like Sampa the Great. She's singing out there and making money. From music, she's making a livelihood. We've got boys, one of my favorite rappers on the Coppola Swag swing is MK Makitu. No pondo, Yunga, Ipa Mike, no pondo. Kenny's young brother, Chef 187. These can be helped when we have the correct infrastructure so that kids can make a living as youths out of their music. The other day, one of my daughters, I was joking with uh, my ADC. One of my daughters sent me a song. I didn't know this song. But my daughter said, Dad, have you heard this song? And I said, no, I don't. I, I've never heard it. Which song is this? She says, I'm sending it to you on TikTok. 
They know I had this. Ichibiongo, Chapane, Bang, Chambo. Hello? I'm trying to tell you how you can make a living out of music. This is big business, man. Now, for those of you that may not conceptualize what I'm talking about here, please understand. One singer like Michael Jackson in those days would be flying with two planes. One carrying Michael Jackson and his dancers. The other plane will be carrying musical equipment, cables, engineers, producers, and other people in another plane. All those people are employed by one person. Hello? You can make business out of this. So when the government gets involved in giving the necessary infrastructure to our children, this can be done even here in Zambia. We should also encourage the private sector to get involved. Music is big business out there. And we must make it that our youths, when they are at school, look into the eyes of that child and say, what can this child do other than nine times nine? Because maybe nine times nine, Teshiwe, but in the Mampea microphone, Alaysa Milange, it should be on go, Chapane, Bang, Chapane, Magama Mokita. I'm still talking about youths. Our policy statement is every youth at school or at work. Those who are academically gifted go to school. We shall need the engineers, we need the doctors, we need the pilots, we need the lawyers, etc. But at work, when you're using your talent, that is work, Buana. Let me talk about acting. Those of you who are as old as me, maybe older, will remember every player or every actor that played James Bond. I don't know who, which James Bond was your favorite, but my favorite was Roger Moore. You've got Tom Cruise. You've got Will Smith. You've got Denzel Washington. You've got Jackie Chan. You've got The Rock moving from wrestling into acting. You had actresses like Elizabeth Taylor, Jackie Collins, Judy Dench. You've got actors like Brad Pitt. These people make money. We've got actors, the late Bruce Lee, who made Kung Fu famous in Hollywood. You can make acting a career. We last a cover and under Bambo Kutamba, a Jew of Aretam, if you are Nigeria, Maritamba, Badia. Correct. Maritamba to you, Uriawa, Pempa, the son of a TV, the Nanus, Nguzo, Namish, Vaganshi. You can make a livelihood out of acting. Now, when you don't develop these talents when they are at school, you don't have the teachers who can pinpoint and pick up our children and understand that this child may not be academically gifted, but when you give him this particular talent, his talent comes out. We must begin to pick the children's talents from a very early age so that we direct that child's energy in that direction. As a believer, I'll tell you this. The good book, the Bible, tells us that your gift will take you before kings. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. I'm not in church, but I have to remind you because it's also in the Bible. Now, when you see the king or queen of England, or you see a Zambian president, as I shall soon be doing, Leaving State House, going to Heroes Stadium. What is taking me there? It is the talent of Patson Daka Buana. It is the talent of Fashion Sakala Buana. Without the talent, why do I have to meet these boys? I want to see some football. That's what we go and watch there. It brings those youths before kings. Let's talk about boxing. I'm going through these careers so that you understand that there are many ways and talents for kids to make money. 
One of the greatest names you know in boxing is Muhammad Ali. He always told us he was the greatest. That still rings in my ears. I remember as a child in 1974, somewhere there, sitting and waiting. The rumble in the jungle. Who's the idiot? Kwadi Uluwuri. Kaisa Torochi, George Foreman, wait round. We thought this guy was finished. There he was, world champion again. You've got boxers like Joe Frazier, George Foreman, Floyd Mayweather, the money team. Mike Tyson, Evander Holyfield, these have made names and money from boxing. But for the youths, don't forget where I'm coming from. Ask the question, how many of these went through university? How many of these went to college? Mike Tyson, Muhammad Ali started boxing because somebody stole his bike. That's how he went to the gym and said, one you a bike and go Musanga? But I need training. What is good about sports also is that it instills discipline in our children. Let us remember that. Ask yourselves, ask yourselves, if you may, how many of these personalities I've outlined above here went through university? And yet, they have lived comfortable lives, far much better than most of us sitting here. In Zambia Must Prosper, we want to give every youth a chance at a good, prosperous life. So, talent development, right at school, will be P1. That is why we shall begin with the necessary infrastructure and changes to our educational system. That is why we believe, and I shall repeat this, and you shall see it all over the posters. Every youth at school or at work. Now, those who may not be artistic or academically gifted, that's not the end. We've got boys at a Pangama gate. Boys who build blocks for us, pavers. Boys who can do carpentry. Boys who are builders. Boys who do metal work. That is also work. We need to ensure that those boys are taken care of. We give them the necessary infrastructure. Some of those boys have lived on the roads, on the streets for a very long time, and they've raised families from those very streets to Ilala Seka Yo. And some of us will go and buy gates from those kids. Zambia must prosper, will look after those youths. When you analyze what I have said here, what you will see that in the athletic area, you're going to see that one athlete will have coaches, is going to have physical trainers, is going to have scouts, is going to have managers, is going to have maintenance staff, television staff, presenters, cameramen, technological staff, just around him. This is the number of jobs that come out of just one person or a team, as the case may be. This, fellow Zambians, is big business. But the takeaway home for those of us who are parents here is this. A child in sports is a child out of court. I'll repeat that. A child in sports is a child out of court. When you keep a child busy, you'll be out of mischief. Let's talk about the informal sector just for a bit. The informal sector is a byproduct of organized formal employment. Statistics indicate that over 2.5 million Zambians are in the informal sector today. Our youths and women in this sector feel abandoned today because the government has not provided the necessary infrastructure for them to do business. In fact, they've been kicked out of the streets. They've been kicked out of the business areas where they were making money. The major groups in this informal sector include farmers, marketeers, vendors, 
hawkers, bus drivers, taxi drivers, lorry drivers, conductors, contractors, builders, welders, plumbers, maids, metal fabricators, saloon owners, carpenters, barber shop owners, car washers, and many others. This is the informal sector. Unlike the UPND government, Zambia must prosper is passionate to break the poverty cycle in this group. Zambia must prosper will by policy ensure that our citizens in the informal sector are assisted by organizing their businesses so that they can access credit to grow their businesses. Today, it is very difficult for people in the informal sector to go and borrow money from the banks. In Zambia must prosper, we shall respect our people in the informal sector. And indeed, we shall amend the banking laws so that they too can have access, access to financing. And they can grow their businesses and graduate into bigger business people. In Zambia must prosper, we believe that when we improve the working environment of our informal sector, we are likely to solve 80% of our poverty problems as a country. Why do I say this? Every person, every person in the informal sector, and this goes across maybe to the formal sector, every person who is employed looks after his wife, a minimum of three children, two little cousins, a brother, and maybe his parents. So when you do the math, one person is looking after eight people. That's very important. We shall repeat this. A youth with skill is a youth off the street. Let me move to mining, because we are still talking about job creation. The mining sector. I want to tell a story here. Please listen to the story because it has a thread to what I'm going to say after this. One of the founding fathers of an African country, Mwarimu Julius Nyerere, was being interviewed when he went visiting in America one time. And they were asking him, Mr. Nyerere, why are you so much in a hurry to have independence for Tanganyika? That time it was Tanganyika, not Tanzania. His answer was a masterstroke. And that's what I want you to understand here. He said, if you come into my house and you steal my jacket and you wear it, and I know that that is my jacket and I find you, and I tell you that I want my jacket back. You can't start telling me that no, you are not ready to have your jacket back, number one. No, this jacket does not look good on you. No, the color does not match your skin. No, I'll bring it next year. No, Nyerere said, you the foreigners, the colonizers, came into Tanganyika and took over our country. And now we are asking for our country back. And you're telling us, no, we are not ready. I am telling you now that the jacket belongs to me. I want you to understand that because what I'm going to say about mining is very important. In the mining sector, we have the same mentality that the colonial masters brought here. They came and started mining our gold, our copper, our cobalt, our emeralds, our sugilite, our lithium, name the minerals. They've been mining them for hundreds of years here in Zambia, if you don't know. Now, you tell these colonial masters, no, we want to run our own businesses. Then they tell you, no, you're not ready. Just like they were telling you, the jacket is not ready for you. I want to tell those people that want to do business with us here, especially in the mining sector, the minerals belong to the Zambian people. Whatever minerals are being mined in this country belong to Zambians first. And therefore, 
They must first benefit the Zambians before they benefit you. Somewhere I read that a spoon does not know the taste of soup, nor a learned fool the taste of wisdom. Some of our leaders today don't even understand that we've got soup. Not kwa to muto no Zambia. Efo wa muisa ve shila kuno muto vale foa ya. They don't just come to see your pretty faces. They don't come for the sun. No. Besa mukwimba no kusenda. It is time we learned the taste of soup. Yes. A wise man once told me that some men can go through a forest and see no firewood. This is what is happening to this government. They can see the mines, but they cannot see the value in those mines. So they keep giving away the mines. In Zambia must prosper. This will not happen. We are going to ensure in Zambia must prosper that the water, the mineral wealth, the oils, if ever we discover, the precious stones, any gas that we discover buried in the earth of Zambia must first benefit the Zambian people before it leaves this country. So the first beneficiaries to our wealth must be the Zambians. This is a major difference between ZMP and UPND. In this party, Zambians come first. In amending our economic laws, the mining laws will be paramount. I say this because I'm a lawyer and I understand. There have been a lot of conflicts between surface right owners and mining right owners. Without you saying anything. By a stroke of a pain from a guy called the director of mines. We must be very careful. In amending the economic laws of this country, we must be careful and ensure that Zambians are going to be looked at first. Yes. Under ZMP, we shall by policy introduce what we shall call here in Zambia, the mineral clearing house or a bonded warehouse to clear minerals. Please listen and listen very carefully. No mineral will be mined in Zambia and shall leave Zambia until we receive a corresponding payment in this country in one of our banks. There will be no secret or private sales of our minerals. With regard to the gemstones, the same regulations will operate and equally the sale of our gemstones will be done by open bidding here in Zambia. We receive the money in Zambia, not outside. The mining tax regimes will also be amended to ensure that ZRA will be able to collect maximum taxes for the benefit of the Zambian people. All mining and geological mapping data will be restricted and protected. As we believe some of this information may have been stolen and is benefiting individuals instead of the country. ZCCMIH will be restructured. IDC will have to set up companies to work with ZCCMIH so as we control the bonded mineral clearing houses. Bank of Zambia and ZRA will have the supervisory oversight on all payments that will ensure maximum benefit comes to the Zambians. Zambia must prosper will reset our relationship with our investors. Those willing to do business with us 
must obey the new rules that we're going to put up. We shall set up new parameters. Any bad deal that is not benefiting Zambia will be re-looked at and renegotiated. Zambia must prosper, will not allow our country to engage with investors from a position of begging junior partners with a begging bowl. I repeat, remember what Julius Nyerere said, the jacket is mine. The minerals under the earth of Zambia belong to who? The Zambians. Remember, the minerals are ours. So we shall decide how we deal with them. Under Zambia must prosper, our mining agreements will be a win-win situation. No more, no less. Our aim in all this will be to retain existing jobs and indeed create new and more jobs for Zambians. With the mines working at optimum, the contractors working in those mines will also employ more people. Whatever I'm saying here is about job creation. Whatever I'm saying here is to protect the interests of the Zambians. Let us talk about the energy sector. As Zambia must prosper, we know that it is simple elementary economics as a fact that a nation's poverty is directly and very closely tied to its low productivity. It follows that when a nation collectively fails to produce or indeed produces little wealth, that nation will be poor. As a matter of common sense, you cannot enjoy wealth that you do not produce, you do not generate, or you do not control, or you do not have. For example, in a village of a hundred households, if that village is meant to produce a hundred bags of mini meal per month so that the families can live, and in one month they are only able to produce 40 bags, that means 60 other families will starve. For a nation to be productive, one of the major ingredients required is energy. This can be electricity, fuel, gas, coal, or solar systems. A nation or a country without energy is as good as dead. This is what the UPND has done to Zambia. The UPND in government has decided to export our power to our neighbors when we also need that power for production. The UPND in its confused state, in the converse, decide now to hike fuel prices. I know that my good friend, the president of this country, <laughs> likes talking about Imingalato. But let me tell you, Mwana, Irena Kurira Copa Belt. Dimuina Mufurida, Ka. Namulete ya bola, teminga la teweka yo. Tuarikuwa tano tuma games tumbio te tuarete ya. Nganaku ipusha po, tawanja soke, wabushe pampu wali ishiva. Because teminga la teweka feweka yo. Bela kufunda fe chime mbacha abu fiati yo minga la teweka. Minga la teweka yari kwa te pampu ka. Nganaku sompo la teweka kwa te pampu. So this kind of economics you're practicing, which is hurting the Zambians, come 2026, Zambia must prosper is alive to our nation's need for energy. 
This is because Zambia, for Zambia to begin experiencing positive shifts in the levels of household wealth, we will need our GDP to improve. Our GDP cannot improve when we don't have energy or when the energy is too expensive. That will lead to lower productivity. A nation that does not produce is a poor nation. And this is what the UPND government wants to do. Because they want to keep us in perpetual poverty. Because very Kwatamama business in some of the things they want us to buy. Zambia must prosper, we will take advantage of our water bodies in the northern parts of our country. And we shall make more but smaller hydro dams to generate more electricity. We will also take advantage of our God-given free sun, Atasubako, and maximize in setting up solar electricity farms along our major roads also in open spaces. With new technology, the power captured will be pushed into our national grid for surplus. Zambia must prosper will allow private enterprise to engage in such generation of power while allowing Zesco to transmit and distribute the excess for security reasons. We are aware that we will need to invest in power storage facilities to be able to control supply and demand. The last few months of load shedding has taught us deep lessons which we shall never forget. But, but, I promise you, under Zambia must prosper. This will not happen. With regard to fuel imports, statistics indicate that as a nation we import about $10 billion worth of fuel. This is about 10 to 15 percent of our national imports. In order to be competitive and productive, we will need to renegotiate our sourcing contracts and change the tax laws vis-a-vis -vis the fuel. We in Zambia must prosper, we will ensure that fuel prices come down. But will not affect the pockets of the Zambians. The answer to our poverty levels, fellow Zambians, is production, production, production. Let me talk about our women and senior citizens. For Zambia must prosper, our women will always come first. This is because, because of this. Thank you. As I was saying, 
For Zambia must prosper, women will always come first. Because of this, every policy and developmental agenda will put the interests of our women first. We will put the health of our women as a priority. A healthy woman will look after her husband and her children. A healthy woman will look after the extended family and friends. Statistics have shown that most family and community events in our country, such as weddings, funerals, traditional ceremonies, and all other events, including the looking after our senior citizens, retirees, and pensioners, are put together and attended to by our women. Even in churches, most events and functions have a larger female membership and participation. It is our women who visit the sick more in our homes and hospitals. As Zambia must prosper, we shall encourage and champion increased women representation in politics and leadership. When women are in leadership, this is what we see. But these facts have been studied and these facts are known as true. When women are in leadership, these facts are true. One, women advocate for policies that better and benefit families and communities, not themselves. Number two, women are less prone to corruption and are more principled than the male folk. Number three, women protect and manage resources allocated more fairly and effectively. Number four, women are more compassionate, more understanding, and are more open during negotiations. Number five, women invest more time in their families and communities. Number six, women, when they work together, are more productive and when they are in charge they produce the best out of each other for these and more traditional reasons in order to promote family ties that our culture is founded on by policy, Zambia Must Prosper will introduce what we shall term the social cash coupon transfer. What this means is that we shall encourage our women to look after the pensioners, the senior citizens, and the retirees by giving them coupons which they can be able or they shall be able to cash in big shops and also they can use in areas such as transportation. Our senior citizens, our senior citizens will be in charge of those coupons, but the women will help them because they are the ones who are going to be buying the food for them, cooking for them, looking after them. Because this is a natural instinct of a woman. In addition, in addition, our senior citizens will be allowed half fare when it comes to transportation on any bus route. These are senior citizens who have already worked for this country. They have already given the best to this country. They have paid their taxes and they are retired. Why are you going to charge them the same amount as a youth who's working today? Under Zambia must prosper. Senior citizens will be paying half price for everything that they want. In Zambia must prosper, we will support and promote our women to begin and grow businesses. As we change our economic laws, we will also have the interests of the women at heart to ensure that they have access to credit lines. However, 
I have a challenge to our women. Please listen. Wanamayo. Na minumba sana. Nomba mungu mfwe. And listen to me good. As Zambia must prosper, one of our biggest policies is that we need to increase our population. Mwitampo ku ilole shayo. Mwitampo ku ilole shayo. Mwitampo ku ilole shayo. Ni nchito yenu wa namayo ku chita increase population ya chalo chino. Lesa, lesa tu pe la fe chito futimo. Omo mwa na inge kala nine months. Mpaka afia alwa. Ni muri na mayo. Hallelujah. We need a large population because a large population is good business. A large population gives us patients. A large population gives us students. A large population gives us doctors, lawyers, pilots, bankers. Without a big population, there will be no commerce and trade in this country. Population yala chepa. Ndefo alashibani tu nomba buonze. Tumo nina mayo uri mupe epina ifu. Ngali hapa tari mutu nune mumulo reshe na amen. So no mumuwewe ifi. Wana mayo. Muzambia mas prosper that we follow unangani. Washibantu. Tientuwewe wana mayo. Give us those babies iwe. Ni nchito yenu wa na maa yoku tupela population. Hele wa yufi ya la ripano, tawa ya kamifirwe. Mukafiana. Lastly, let me talk about good governance. Any politics that is based on tribe or ethnicity can tear a nation apart. When a political leader believes in discrimination, segregation, settling of political scores, and using government to arm twist other political leaders, especially in the opposition, such politics is like a stillborn baby with no future. In line with upholding the supremacy of the rule of law and good governance, Zambia must prosper will give priority to infrastructure development, as I've said. We will construct more magistrates' courts and district courts and ensure that we also have enough high courts for justice to be dispensed. We shall construct high courts to help decongest prisons to ensure speedy hearings. We will also construct more police stations with better holding cells to ensure the dignity of our suspects. We must always remember when you when someone is arrested, he's still innocent until proven guilty. We will also construct and expand the prisons in our country, especially in cities and large towns. This will be done in phases. Zambia must prosper in government, will not engage in politics of prosecuting and persecuting other opposition leaders. This is backward thinking. We will not block citizens to do business purely on political lines. Zambia must prosper. We will not cancel government contracts on political lines. Ngawali wina contract. Even if you belong to UPND, you will still be able to do business. Every citizen will be allowed to do business with government. Or parastatal government. No business contracts will be stopped or cancelled simply because you belong to a certain tribe. Fiabu Senshifi. Citizens will not be arrested for holding a different point of view or opinion. Criticism will be allowed. 
we shall not practice politics of revenge and witch hunting. Civil servants will not be dismissed or promoted on tribal lines. That is wrong. To reduce corruption, new guidelines will be given to civil servants, especially in the areas of procurement. Civil servants to be employed on merit at all times. The retirement age will be fixed and adhered to. There will be, under Zambia must prosper, no unnecessary extensions of contracts, except in rare specialized cases. If you keep giving the retirees and pensioners who are above age contracts, when are the young ones going to be promoted? In the area of immigration, we will amend the law. The issuance of permits will have a new regime. Investment laws for foreigners will also be realigned. In the administration of justice, our magistrates and our judges will be regulated as to sitting times and the delivery of judgments in cases. We cannot have cases running for more than 10 years, 15 years, more than two. It does not need to be a financial crime, a crimes court, to deliver quick judgment. Every court must deliver judgment early. There shall be a new system to be introduced to ensure that all pending cases are concluded without delay. I will repeat, the people that we are keeping in police cells or in prisons, or even if they are on police bond or bail, they are still innocent until proven guilty. <laughs> Fellow Zambians, in the absence of a firm foundation in the area of governance, most functions of government will fail. In short, in the absence of good governance, our country will become dysfunctional. For the national economic transformation to be a reality, we will need the hard-working farmer from Southern Province to bring his knowledge and discipline on the table. We will need the ingenuity and courage of a Bemba man from Northern Province to push for results. We will need the fairness and loyalty of a Westerner, Kwahai, to come to the table and seal the deal. We will need the tenacity, depth, and steadiness of my cousins in Eastern Province, Manawakwitu, to hold us steady and ensure that we think straight. We will need the diversity and complexities of our friends and relatives from Northwestern Province so that Zambia can be molded together. Yes. After all, that is what makes us Zambians. Yes. We will need every individual, every family, every tribe, and every region of Zambia to rise up in unison so that we can hold hands together. We can march together to prosperity. Only then, only when we do such, and join forces together, fight together, cry together, bringing our strengths together, can we cancel our imaginary differences? Only then can we cancel our individual weaknesses and form a formidable force that shall be equal to any challenge that may lie ahead of us. And only then can we declare with confidence that we are indeed one Zambia, one nation. Thank you very much. All right, that's all right for you today, lovely viewers. If you did enjoy the video, please don't forget to leave a comment in the comment section below. Tell me what you think about the video you just watched in the comment section below. I'll be super glad to hear from you, lovely viewers. Once again, I go by the name of Mutatim Pondum. I love you, peace. I gotta go.